in 1829, the Glasgow-based printer, Mr. J. Neal, published Bailey Nicol Jarvie's Journey to Arborfoyle, a little ballad sheet containing the lyrics of three songs, one of which was St. Patrick Was a Gentleman. Unfortunately, Neil did not include the name of the writer. So, who wrote this rip-roaring ballad about our national saint, and how did it become popular? On the 27th of June, 1817, a musical farce entitled The Irishman in London was staged at the Theatre Royal in Dublin, Saunders' newsletter reporting that the star of the show, Mr. Webb, introduced a new song called St. Patrick Was a Gentleman Who Came from Decent People, the lyrics of which were written expressly for him by a friend in Cork. The melody, the paper went on to say, was composed by a Mr. W. O'Rourke. Little is known of Mr. Webb's background, apart from the fact that he was regularly billed as an Irish comic actor and singer. But we do know that Mr. W. O'Rourke was Dublin-born William Michael O'Rourke, a violinist and professor of music who had recently anglicised his surname to Rook. O'Rourke often quotes singers attached to the Theatre Royal and the Dublin Amateur Music Society. Then, in May 1822, a London Gazette, the National Register, identified Webb's lyricist friend from Cork as Orr, Tolkien. But according to Thomas Crofton Croker, an antiquarian and music collector from Cork, the lyrics to St. Patrick Was a Gentleman were a joint production, the collective work of Mr. Tolkien and another Corkman, Henry Bennett. In his 1839 publication, The Popular Songs of Ireland, Croker maintained that Bennett and Tolkien originally wrote three verses for the ballad, which they sang at a masquerade or fancy dress ball in Cork in the winter of 1814 or 1815. Dressed as ballad singers, he said, they both sang alternate lines of this fast-paced ballad and another three verses were later added. The last verse, the sixth, written by Tolkien at the request of Webb the comedian. From 1817 to the late 1830s, Mr. Webb sang St. Patrick Was a Gentleman at a number of events in Dublin and in London. The ballad soon found its way to Australia, where it was frequently performed by Joseph Simmons, a comic actor and singer based in Sydney. And back in Dublin, it became a staple item in the repertoire of street singer Michael Morn, also known as Zosimus. The lyrics of St. Patrick Was a Gentleman were translated into Latin and were published in the September 1843 edition of Bentley's Miscellany. Ad divum patricium, de gente natus in claita patricius, ierne, urbem donavit cathedra pyramide superne. Pater, Laurentius Ulegan, qui soror erat graeda, et mater Scilla Mulligan. Vidac conjax breada. Ten years later, Hamilton's Universal Songbook included the music of a Scottish Strathspey fiddle tune called Mrs. Weymouth of Cottle Hill, the composer of which was Nathaniel Gow, and a one-line footnote stated that the modern song of St. Patrick was a gentleman is sung to the above air. Hamilton did not mention O'Rourke, Tolkien, Bennett, or indeed Webb. German-born poet and author Julius Rodenberg was so smitten by the ballad that he translated the entire lyric into German. Again, 
he does not mention the songwriter's names. But what is noticeable about his translation is that he changes the surname of St. Patrick's father, Callaghan, to the more Donegal-sounding surname of Gallagher. Das Lied von St. Patrick, the Song of St. Patrick, was included in Rodenberg's 1861 collection of Irish songs, Die Harfe von Erin. Das Lied von St. Patrick St. Patrick war ein Gentleman und Kind rechtschaffener Leute, er baut ein Kirchlein in Dublin, mit Turm und mit Geläute. Seine Vater war ein Gelegger, seine Mutter eine Brady, sein Mumme, ne Ozhaunessy, und Base des O'Grady. Rodenberg also included a musical score to accompany Das Lied von St. Patrick. But the tune bears but a scant resemblance to Mrs. Weymouth of Cottle Hill. Which begs the question, what did the original tune sound like? The Australian Town and Country Journal, a newspaper based in Sydney, Australia, offered a tantalising clue. On the 16th of March, 1889, the eve of St. Patrick's Day, it published an old setting, both words and music, of St. Patrick was a gentleman, as arranged by pianist and composer Thomas Bloomer Phipps. Back in the 1830s, Phipps arranged for piano and voice a large number of Anglo-Irish folk songs which were published under the title Life in Dublin. It seems more likely that when arranging St. Patrick was a gentleman, Phipps used the original William O'Rourke melody. Scottish musicologist Alfred Moffat included the words and music in his 1898 work The Minstrelsy of Ireland, and a quick glance at the notated score tells the reader that the tune is in fact the same as that arranged by Phipps. The only difference being is that Phipps set it to the key of D minor, Moffat in C minor. The ballad had Several musical settings, said Moffat. The one printed here is probably the original. Let's have a listen. Eighty years later, 1978, Christy Moore released a seminal album called The Iron Behind the Velvet, the first track featuring Patrick Was a Gentleman. The melody used by Moore is akin to the old polka, Maggie in the Woods, quite different from Mrs. Weymouth of Cuttle Hill, or that given by Rodenberg, Phillips and Moffat. In spite of all its melodic manifestations, the lyrics to St. Patrick Was a Gentleman are as enjoyable today as they were 200 years ago. Interestingly, the original ballad included the following chorus. Success to bold Patrick's fist, he was a saint so clever. He gave the frogs and toads a twist and banished them forever. And so ends the story of St. Patrick Was a Gentleman. St. Patrick was a gentleman, he came from decent people. In Dublin town he built a church, and on it put a steeple. His father was a Callaghan, his mother was a Brady. His aunt was an O'Shaughnessy, his uncle was a Grady. Success to bold St. Patrick's fist, he was a saint so clever. He gave the frogs and toads a twist and banished them forever. There 
there's not a mile of Ireland's isle where the dirty vermin musters. Where'er he put his dear foot down, he murdered them in clusters. The toads went hop and the frogs went flop, slap dash into the water. And the beasts committed suicide to save themselves from slaughter. Success to Bull St. Patrick's fist, he was a saint so clever. He gave the frogs and toads a twist and banished them forever. The Wicklow Hills are very high, and so's the Hill of Hoth, sir. But there's a hill that's higher still, yes, higher than them both, sir. Twas on the top of this high hill, St. Patrick preached his sermon. That drove the frogs into the bogs, and exiled all the vermin. Success to Bull St. Patrick's fist, he was a saint so clever. He gave the frogs and toads a twist and banished them forever. No wonder that those Irish boys should be so free and frisky, for good St. Patrick taught them first the joys of tippling whiskey. No wonder that the saint himself to taste it should be willing, for his mother kept a small shebeen in the town of Enniskillen. Success to Bull St. Patrick's fist, he was a saint so clever. He gave the frogs and toads a twist and banished them forever. <laughs> Did they die, 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 did they die